Meow, meow. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's great, shy guy. Uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, does does anyone else want to tell a story? <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> I know me. Why? Why? Because your stories have nothing but, but it's been nothing but pure slander. Your story had me as a bad doctor, and so did yours. So you're all going to listen to my story, and you are going to like it. <clears throat> During the summer of 2001. Events in the southeastern United, United States involving a strange, deformed creature sparked brief local media interest before an apparent blackout was enacted. Little or no information was left intact, as most online and written accounts of the creature were mysteriously destroyed. Primarily focused in New York and once found in Brooklyn, self Proclaimed witnesses told their story of the encounters with a creature of unknown origin. Emotions ranged from extremely traumatic levels of fright and discomfort to an almost childlike sense of playfulness and curiosity. While their published versions are no longer on record, the memories remained powerful. Several of the involved parties began looking for answers that year. In early 2020, the collaboration had accumulated ne nearly two dozen documents dating between 2000 and present day, spanning four continents. In almost all cases, the stories were identical. I have been in contact with a member of this group and was able to get some excerpts from their upcoming book. A slip and slide note. Dated 2000. As I prepare to log off, I feel it necessary to explain why. It is not the fault of anyone other than him. For once I woke and felt his presence. And once I woke and saw his form. Once again I woke and heard his voice and looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep without fear on my next awake to the experience of him saying that he should be in smash I cannot ever wake goodbye found in the same wooden box were two empty envelopes addressed to Mugman and Miss Chalice and one loose personal letter with no envelope dearest Chalice I have prayed for you he spoke your name. A journal entry by Serena Williams, dated 2019. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I see his eyes when I close mine. They are hollow, black. They saw me and pierced me. This wet hand, I will not sleep. His voice, unintelligible text. He told me that. I ain't seen better swings on playgrounds. A trucker's log dated 2002. He came to me in my sleep. From the foot of my bed, I felt a sensation. He took everything. We must return to England. We shall not return here again at the request of the WAG. From a witness dated 2006, which, despite what I said earlier of creature being of unknown origins, it actually explains everything. <sighs> Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving. So my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about uh, 
4 a.m. I woke up thinking my husband had gone up to use the bathroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake him in the process. I apologized and told him I thought he had gone out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed. So quickly, his knee almost knocked me out of the bed. He didn't grab me and said nothing. After adjusting to the dark for half a second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting and facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a man dressed in purple. His body position was disturbing and unnatural, as if it, as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by him, but more concerned as to his condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into the fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry of motion, the creature scrambled around the side of the bed. It then crawled quickly in a flaming sort of motion right along the bed while doing a 360 until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The man was completely silent for about 30 seconds, or probably closer to 5, it just seemed like a while, just looking at my husband. The creature then held its hands and spoke words that will never leave my head. You got any money? When my husband said no, the creature ran to the kids' room. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it crouching and hunched over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in tears. I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my son, little Timmy. The man didn't dare to run down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our son. He was very, his feelings were very badly injured and said that the man kept saying, Get good! Over and over again. My husband drove his car on a banana peel that night while rushing our son to the hospital. That jerk Lakitu stole five coins. Being a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and the local television news never followed up either. For several months, I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house. After we decided to return home, I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in the town next over who had a similar story. We got in contact and began talking about our experiences. We knew of two other people in New York who had seen the man we now refer to as the Wah. It took the four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet and writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believed to be accounts of the Wah. What we learned was that he used he used to be a doctor but was fired for not helping a man with a stolen kidney and letting an obviously mentally insane man leave the hospital where he went on to kill his family. The man is basically a mean homeless man. There were, however, many instances where the creature's visit was one of a series of multiple visits with the same person. Multiple people also mentioned being asked for money and to get good. This led us to wonder if the where had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night. Every night for two weeks, I would tediously scan through the sounds of me rolling in my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep while blurring through 
recording at eight times the normal speed is almost took an hour every day. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a where it was him. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and now I believe that it spoke when I was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that must have gone through my son's head made me very upset. I have not seen no way since he ruined my life, but I now know that he's been in my room while I slept. I know the fear that one night I'll wake up to him staring at me. Do you got any money?